thank you all for coming outside today as we worship on this gray but just nicely breezy day. Um, and as we prepare our hearts to worship, would you turn to number 521? Sing, come thou out of every blessing. noticed as you looked at your bulletin this morning that we are going to do a time of requests so I hope you've been thinking and it can be out of the hymnal, out of the songbook <coughs> so who has Shout out some requests. We're going to write them down and then we'll stand for a while while we sing. Who's got a request? 10,000 Reasons. Okay. Shout to the Lord. Okay, those are both in the book. More? 
as the deer. <coughs> One more for now. We'll take a few more. Anybody else? It looks like to start off you need the song book. And we'll go in that order. And if you stand, please, because you sing better when you stand.
Was it shout to the Lord or shout to the north? Lord. 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 Lord.
The Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7. Began verse 1. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders, instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corban, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside you can defile you by going into you. Rather, it is what comes out of you that defiles you. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? He asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters you from the outside can defile you? For it doesn't go into your heart, but into your stomach, and then out of your body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of you is what defiles you. For from within, out of your hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile you. These are words from God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. God, we thank you for these moments to gather together around the scriptures. And we pray that in these moments, your Holy Spirit would be our teacher. And we pray that the outcome of these moments would not just be that we gain more information about what the scripture says. But God, we invite you to do in us a work of transformation so that more and more in who we are and in how we live the life of Jesus would be evident. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is a moment of conflict between the Pharisees and Jesus. And the disciples are sitting down for a meal, and when they go to eat, they're not engaging in the ritual practice of ceremonially, ceremonially washing their hands. And so the Pharisees want to know what's going on. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law who've come out from Jerusalem to kind of uh, examine Jesus, to kind of uh, interrogate his ministry, they don't know what's going on, and they say, why is this that your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. And you would perhaps expect Jesus to say 
something conciliatory, something uh, like, well, they usually wash their hands, they just don't wash their hands today, or something like that. But instead, Jesus uh, begins to be very negative in his critique of them. He begins to be very energetic in his critique of them. He says, look, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human roles. So Jesus, when he is presented with this dilemma about why aren't your disciples washing their hands, why aren't your disciples holding to the traditions of the elders, uh, he doesn't have anything good to say about the traditions of the elders. He says to the Pharisees and to the teachers of the law, look, you are just teaching human rules. Now, I want to suggest that there is a lot from Jesus for us to absorb in this passage. There is a lot for us to take in. Because what Jesus is doing in this passage is he is turning upside down the whole Jewish observance of the law, the whole Jewish observance of what's in the Hebrew Bible, what's in the Old Testament. Because one of the things, living under Roman occupation, there were a lot of things that the Jewish people weren't in control of. Uh, they weren't in control of the commerce of their country. Uh, they weren't in control of a lot of things about their culture anymore. But one of the things that they could hold on to, one of the things that they were in charge of, was they could control their diet. They could control what they ate. They could control how they ate food. And so the observance of those kosher food laws became very important to them in this period in the nation when they were uh, occupied by Rome, when they were living under that military occupation. It became very important to them to observe those kosher laws. But Jesus comes along and Jesus says to them, look, the most important thing is not washing your hands before a meal. The most important thing is living into the spirit of God, living into the ways that God wants you to live. I think that in a lot of ways, we too often become like the Pharisees and become like the teachers of the law. And we look around us at the people around us and we say, you know, I am glad that I am not like them because Jesus and I are doing great and I am living his way. And we look at the culture around us and we look at the world around us with disapproval. Like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law looked at uh, Jesus and his disciples with disapproval. And we look at the world around us with that same spirit of disapproval. When people are surveyed today and they ask them, what are Christians like? The most common adjective that people have for Christians is judgmental. Judgmental. That when people think about followers of Jesus in our culture, the thing that they associate that with is being judgmental. Now Jesus speaks a word to us about that. In the Sermon on the Mount, he says it very clearly. He says, judge not, or you will be judged. And he goes on to say, with the same measure that you use, it's going to be measured out for you. What would it be like if instead of being known as a bunch of people who were judgmental, we were known in our culture, we were known in our world as people who were compassionate? What would that be like? Imagine that. Imagine if you were around town and people would say, there's a compassionate person. There's someone who's merciful. There's someone who doesn't judge other people. There's someone who has a good word to say. What would that be like? Because I think what Jesus is saying in this passage is he, he does turn the kosher laws upside down. He says, you know, several times, he says, look, it's not the stuff that comes into you that defiles you. 
It's not what you eat that is a source of defilement for you. Because what the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were focusing on is they were focusing on what was on the outside. They were concerned with the external. They were concerned with what was performative that they could measure, that they could assess, that they could control that was on the outside. But Jesus says what is most important is what's inside. Because he says it's that that starts out from inside you and comes out. That's what defiles you. And Jesus says, out of a person's heart come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. So Jesus is saying, it's okay to eat whatever you need to eat. It's okay to wash your hands ceremonially or not wash your hands ceremonially. Jesus is saying to the Pharisees and to the teachers of the law, he's saying to them, they're the religious folk heroes of their time. They're the people that were thought of when you thought of somebody who was living a pious life, somebody who was living a faithful life, you would think about a Pharisee or a teacher of the law. We don't think about it like that because we have kind of absorbed a prejudice against the Pharisees, but in Jesus' day, they were the people who were considered spiritual. They were the people who were considered faithful. They were the ones on whom had been projected all the religious aspirations of the Jewish people. But Jesus says the thing that they're concerned about that outward performance, that outward uh, insistence on the traditions of the elders, that's not what's important. What's important is what comes out of you. Now, look at the example that Jesus gives of how they've set aside the law of God. They've set aside the real teaching of Israel's God, and they've substituted their teachings, their human traditions. It's this idea of taking care of your parents in their old age. And Jesus quotes from Moses, and he says, look, uh, Moses says, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corban, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Can you imagine that? That people would say, I'm not going to take care of my parents because what I had set aside to care for them, what I had set aside to provide for their needs, what I had set aside to, to be good to them in their old age, I've devoted that to God. I've devoted that to God and so I'm not going to take care of my parents. That would be a scandal in our culture, because in our culture, we want to take care of older people. But it was a scandal also in Jesus' day. And Jesus is pointing out to them, Jesus is being very clear. He's saying, look, you are setting aside the commands of God to care for your elders, and you're just passing along human traditions. I wonder, is there anything that we do that we pass along from generation to generation that isn't the way of Jesus. It's just a human tradition. You have lots of examples in our Mennonite world of there are things that we don't do, there are things that we don't say, there are actions that we don't take. But I hope that for us, all those things are grounded in the way of Jesus. They're not just human traditions that we pass along. But Jesus says there is stuff from within a person that defiles them. And he gives this long list of things that come from within a person's heart that defile them. Sexual immorality, theft, murder. Now as I read this list, you may be checking it off in your mind and you may be saying to yourself, oh, that's not me. I'm, I'm off the hook this morning. I don't have to worry about that. I'm not guilty. 
of any of those things. Adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. Jesus is saying all these things come out of us. And Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, it's not just what we do outwardly. It's not just what we uh, commit ourselves to in terms of our actions. What also matters to Jesus is what's inside of us. So if we think about things uh, that we shouldn't be thinking about, if we uh, say things that we shouldn't be saying, Jesus says that's important too. That's important for us to focus on. We are called by God to live from the inside out. We are called to follow the way of Jesus. We are called to set aside things that are just human commands and instead to follow in the ways of God, to follow in the way of Jesus. So I encourage you, I want you to live from the inside out. Amen. As I was trying to think of a, a song to follow the sermon this week, um, one song from my past kept coming up, a song that I used with kids and used with Joyful Noise Choir and probably a vacation Bible school or two. And, and I just couldn't come up with anything better. So I'm going to teach you a really easy song um, that, who knows, maybe some of your kids sang when they were in Joyful Noise Choir. Um, but it's along the lines of kind of, you know, there's the saying, you are what you eat, and we've just heard that it doesn't, we, it doesn't matter what we eat. But on the spiritual side, we know that there are things that, that we consume that are, are better for us. Um, if we are feeding ourselves with a diet of, of hate and greed and lust, that those are going to come out in our actions, and if we are feeding ourselves on a diet of, of love and truth and um, justice and peace, those are going to come out in our actions. And that's what this song is. What, com what comes in, what goes in must come out. That's what the Word of God's about. What goes in must come out. That's what the Word of God's about. And then we're going to put in some things. Um, and it goes like this. What goes in must come out. That's what the word of God's about. Wait, I gotta get a better key. Mm -hmm. What goes in must come out. That's what the word of God's about. What goes in must come out. That's what the word of God's about. Okay, try to sing that with me. What goes in must come out. That's what the word of God's about. What goes in must come out. That's what the word of God's about. So, what should we put in? That's what I would ask kids when we were this <laughs> So, I mean, a good answer is love. Love goes in, love comes out. That's what the word of God's about. Love goes in, love comes out. That's what the word of God's about. Peace. Peace goes in, peace comes out. That's what the word of God's about. Peace goes in, peace comes out. That's what the word of God's about. Mercy. Mercy goes in, mercy comes out. That's what the word of God's about. Mercy goes in, mercy comes out. That's what the word of God's about. Justice. Um, I did with mercy realize that two syllable things are a little harder, so we're gonna we're just gonna do justice in, justice out. Okay, justice in, justice out. That's what the word of God's about. Justice in, justice out. That's what the word of God's about. Hope. Hope goes in, hope goes out. That's what.
what the Word of God's about. Hope goes in, hope comes out. That's what the Word of God's about. Joy. Joy goes in, joy goes out. That's what the Word of God's about. Joy goes in, joy goes out. That's what the Word of God's about. Anything else? Then I'll just remind you, what goes in must come out. That's what the Word of God's about. What goes in must come out. That's what the Word of God's about. I see. John said I have to give her back her expensive pen. Oh, yes. Q&B. <laughs> so this is the time in the service when you, if you have a comment about the sermon, if you have a prayer request, if you have an announcement, this is the time to share those. If you'll just stand where you are to share and be sure and say your name. Yeah, Jane. Yeah. I just want to remind everybody that the senior lunches will start again um, the first one is September 19th so the sign up sheet will be up next week in the fellowship room and we look forward to starting that again yeah Ernie uh, our friend Neil's mom's not doing too well uh, she may not be living that much longer she has cancer mm -hmm. uh, so we'll just hopefully that if she does, we kind of pray for him and everything else. So his name is Neil Hilton. Yeah. And his mom's name is Cindy Hilton. Okay. Lynn, um, during Pastor Michael's sermon, I was remembering um, a book that I read long ago that I believe was actually written by someone I went to college with, but it was... If I remember right title, We Are the Pharisees. And the premise was that, um, like Michael said, the, the Pharisees were the good spiritual, the good church folk of their day. And, and we, you know, are the good church folk of our day. So it was really encouraging us to see what Pastor Michael was pointing out, where we might be holding human traditions or own traditions higher than what God is asking us to do. And that was a, just a good reminder to, of, for me when I read that book to, to keep that in mind, that, that as a good church folk of, of my day, I need to make sure that I'm not being a Pharisee.
So we want to keep praying for Glenn, uh, and this is the time we were praying this morning for uh, teachers and students as they are heading back to school, um, and we also want to pray for uh, different places in our world that are undergoing war, that there would be peace in our world. And... Um, you see in the bulletin today is the day of prayer for creation. One of the things that made me uh, want to be a Mennonite in the first place was creation care. The idea that we are stewards of the world that God has created and we are responsible for taking care of it. Let's pray together. God, we pray for Neil's mom, Cindy, as she struggles with cancer. God, we pray for the doctors and nurses that look after her, that they would have wisdom and skill from you to know just how best to take care of her. And we pray for Neil as he's concerned for his mom. We pray for his whole family. God, we pray for Glenn that you would strengthen him, that you would help him as he continues to recover. God, we pray for Cindy as she continues with her therapy. And we pray that you would strengthen her as well. God, we pray for our world. So many places in our world are um, places of suffering and pain, places of war. And Jesus, we know that your dream is for peace in our world, that your desire is for peace in our world. And all too often, Lord, it looks as if those in authority in our world do not know the way of peace. But we know that ultimately, Lord, you are sovereign over the hearts of rulers. And so we pray for peace. We pray for an end to conflict in Gaza between Israel and Hamas. God, we pray for an end to the fighting in the Ukraine, between Ukraine and Russia. God, we trust you to bring about peace in our world. We pray that we would be ambassadors of peace, that we would be peacemakers, that we would work for reconciliation in our households and in our neighborhoods, in our community. God, we know that you're able to do more than we ask, more than we can even imagine. So we pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
from this place to live from the inside out. Go from this place to live not in your own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.